All right, so for tonight, we are going to be continuing qualifiers and tie-downs. Uh, we went through qualifiers last week, and so we're going to go through tie-downs, but I'm going to do a little bit of a review from November 6th, and that would also be uh, uh, the review of our qualifiers. So let's take a look at this. Qualifiers and tie-downs. During the conversation, you must ask questions. Uh, keep your agenda off the table. I cannot express this deep enough. Uh, so many salespeople are too interested in getting their point across rather than trying to listen to the client. Your clients, if you get them talking, if you get them open up, if in fact you ask them the right questions, leading questions, open-ended questions, and I hope you all understand open-end versus closed, and open-end just means they can't answer with yes or no. They have to elaborate on that question. If you get them talking, they will tell you exactly what you need to close. Cater your pitch, and yes, I know a lot of people don't like the word pitch, but we're on a sales training. And there is no better word for it because many times salespeople just get this rote thing that they kind of repeat, and there's no energy to it. But a pitch truly is you're serving it up. Think about baseball. You're pitching. You're, you're serving that ball up for them to do whatever they want. So if you always throw a fastball, I want you to think about this. If you always throw a fastball, if you always have the exact same pitch, well, eventually in the course of that game, your batters are going to understand. He always throws a fastball. He always throws it low left. They're going to adjust what they do to be able to hit it out of the park, and that's not what you're looking for. You don't want them to hit it out of the park. You want to be able to direct them. So if you're changing up your pitch, if you're throwing fastballs, curveballs, if you're throwing knuckleballs based on your client, based on your client's need, based on the questions you asked your client, if you have that ability to change up the pitch and cater to the client, you're always going to keep your client, and this may sound bad, but I want you to get it in context, you're always going to keep them guessing. What does that do to a client? Well, that makes them want more information. I'm not saying keep them guessing like scratching their head like what in the heck is this guy doing? But if you make it interesting to them, if you make it relevant to them, that is what is going to engage your client, get them talking. And what you're really trying to do is you're trying to gain their trust. The only way to do this is to ask questions. And I think we forget that. All too often, we just want to get our point across. All right, if we move forward from there, find out what is important to the person you're speaking with. Uh, you know, in context with that, this helps to qualify the prospect. Are they a good candidate for being an agent or a client? And I know many of you are thinking right now, what do you mean are they a good client? If they have, a, you know, a good uh, candidate for being an agent or a client. If they have debt, they're a good candidate for being a, a client. No, if this person has never owned a computer, if this person will not own a computer, if this person will not use technology, they probably aren't a good client for our product. They may buy it, they may like the idea, but the fact of the matter is you have to ask questions. Have you ever used a computer? Are you still writing checks? Do you do any online banking? Are you okay with technology introduced into your finance? If those questions come back as a no, ask them, well, why is that? Have you had a bad experience with that? What, what was your experience? Here would be an open-ended question. What was your experience with technology that makes it so you would not integrate technology into your finance or your banking? and let them talk. Maybe that's a point of objection that you can overcome with the client and say, well, you know, things have advanced. We are moving fast. This is something uh, that is workable for you. Do you use a cell phone? Do you have a smartphone? Have you ever texted? Uh, this is just where technology is going. So make sure that they're a good candidate for both sides. On the agent side, have you ever done direct sales? Have you ever had a book of business? How about this? They may have never done direct sales. They may not have a book of business, but they may have been going to the same church or the same BPO Elks or lived in the same community for 40 years, and they know everybody from the guy that's running the gas station to the guy that's running the 7-Eleven to all the teachers in the school to all the kids in the neighborhood to everybody in the neighborhood. One of my best salespeople ever had never sold anything in their life ever. They were a teacher. I want you to think about that. Never sold anything. They were a teacher. They knew everybody and everybody's kids taught at the same school for 25 years. And they always said to me, Mac, I'm not a salesperson. I said, well, actually, you are. Because sales is not about gimmicks. 
Sales is about initiating a conversation. People used to ask me, Mac, how have you been so successful in sales? And I always tell them it's three simple words. Have a conversation. This is more difficult coming into the society we're in today because everybody wants to text message. Everybody wants things quick and easy. Again, I had a conversation with a gentleman today. I sent him an email. I think the email, he got a different tone out of the email of what I was trying to say. It was in response to an email that he had sent to a field agent that is uh, somebody that I hold very dear to me. And I know the individual on the call knows that I'm talking about them. And getting them on the phone and walking them through this conversation, walking them through the email, there was a, a, a very obvious clarity uh, in the verbal conversation that we had as opposed to what they perceived from the email. So I want you to understand something. You can't just do your job with emails. You can't just do it with text. You have to touch the client. You have to have a conversation. You have to develop these interpersonal, relational Skills, active listening, the ability to carry a conversation with people. Is this someone you would actually want to work with? Um, whether it be on the product side, because many of you are financial planners, insurance agents, you want a client for life. And this is maybe just a door entry way or a way to free up the money so that you can sell life premium. You get them out of debt. Maybe you're into solar and you're saving them money on solar and then taking that money they're saving on solar, loading it into the worth account and showing that as discretionary income. There are so many different avenues that you can utilize this product as either a door opener or a closing deal with the client. Um, helps you determine what the aspects of being an agent client the prospect would appreciate the most. And you're never going to know that information unless you engage in a conversation. The other thing about using qualifying questions is it helps weed out people who are not willing to think outside of the box, not really interested in the opportunity or the product, or they're interested in maintaining the status quo. Don't spend a lot of time talking to people that don't have any interest. Open up with some questions. Ask them some things. What are you trying to accomplish? Maybe it's not getting out of debt. Maybe they need a retirement plan. Maybe you ought to look in your own organization. Do you have insurance planners? Do you have mortgage brokers? Do you have people that are in debt elimination? Not everybody is doing this as a full-time job. This idea of co-share, uh, what we would call hive mind or, or mutual think tank, um, this is huge. This is how your business will truly explode. Maybe you are um, you know, centering in on worth and you've got a person that's on insurance. Well, tell them, look, anybody that's looking for insurance or looking for retirement planning or whatever, I'll send your way. But if they're looking for worth, send them my way. You begin to co-exchange. And it doesn't matter if you're on the same team or not on the same team. At the end of the day, you can have endless referrals by networking this business inside the folds of Worth Unlimited with the people that you meet, the people on the calls, the people that you know. Get in touch with your leader. Ask them, what do you do outside of this? Start getting involved and start looking at this. Recruiting, you need to dig deeper. Get to know your prospect. Ask about their specialty and their prospective field. Uh, what made them get into that field? How long have they been working in the field? I, ideal clients or target market? I'm giving you ideas of questions that you can be asking that are open-ended to get to know your individual if what they are concerned about is recruiting. How has the economy affected their business, et cetera? If you're targeting realtors, loan officers, financial planners, and or insurance agents, include three or more value propositions. And all a value proposition is is you have learned what is important to them, what are they looking for to come alongside their business. And then what you're going to want to do is the prospect will tell you things that are important to them, and then you can adjust your presentation to include things that are important to them from your value proposition. So you have this initial conversation. Uh, if you're trying to do this all at one time, you better be taking notes. Okay, this was important, this was important, this was important. And then when you get to positioning the product, you want to hit at least two or three of these key points that they brought up. Say, now you mentioned this earlier, or if I'm understanding you correctly, this is important. Well, let me show you how joining worth, how using worth fits that value proposition, how it fits that concern, how it fits what it is that you're looking for. Listen, here's the end of the day. You cannot beat a square peg into a round hole. But I will tell you this. If you listen intently enough, you can take your square peg and you can shave it and you can make it a round pig's peg. You can make it a round peg so it fits in that hole. Does that make sense to everybody? 
I really hope that makes sense. You can't take the square peg and beat it in the hole. But if you listen intently to the client, you can shave, you can mold your peg so it's now round and it fits in that round hole exactly. And there's enough uh, side or lateral market with Worth Unlimited um, that you can tailor this to just about anybody's need that's in business currently. In the sales side, dig do deeper and you notice I started with the same thing, get to know your prospect. Why is this situation such a struggle for you? Debt. Why is retirement planning? Why is whatever it is? And you notice these are open-ended. Why is this situation ABC? Why is this such a struggle for you? If there was a solution, would you want to know more about that solution? Would you, what would make that solution more enticing would be the follow-up to make that open-ended. How long has this been an issue for you, this situation? Maybe they list two or three, so these are now building your value propositions. How has the economy affected your current situation? When speaking with potential clients, remember, people buy on emotion and they back it up with logic. So they, I don't care whether you like it or not, they have to like you. They have to trust you. They have to want to know that you're vested in them. And again, I have to take it back to the same thing. The only way you're going to get that across to a client is if, you ask questions and you use active listening. You repeat things back to them. They know that you're engaged and you care about their situation more than you care about getting your point across or your offering. Make sure you build value from the very beginning and you build value initially with trust. You build value with being an advocate. You build value by listening, repeating, acknowledging, and not just blowing over their objections. Let me tell you something. You want to destroy a sale really quick? Have somebody mention an objection and just say something out of your mouth because you're thinking of the next thing you want to say, and don't answer that objection. They shut you down immediately. You are done. The prospect will tell you things that are important to them. Again, just like recruiting. You notice the opening statement and the end statement are identical. The body in the middle is a little bit different. The prospect will tell you things that are important to them, and then you can adjust your presentation to include the things that are important to them from what? Your value proposition. Always be thinking about the value proposition. What is this client really telling me? And this goes from hearing or listening and knowledge, hearing, listening, you have the knowledge, to active listening and understanding. That's what we're trying to achieve here is understanding your prospect. Understand their intention. Would you agree that people don't always say what they mean? How many of you out there are married? How many out there have ever been married? How many out there have had a difficult child? And they say something to you, and you think you understood what they said. And I'll give you a great example. I've been married for years. Honey, do you mind if I go do, do, you mind if I go do ABC? Do whatever you think would be best. Now, I'm telling you right now, if you're a guy, even if you're a gal, and you've ever heard that phrase come out of somebody's mouth, that is not permission to go ahead and do it. That is their way of saying to you, um, you need to ask me a couple more questions here because the way you put that, I'm just going to say whatever you think is best, but if you go and do that thing, you're going to have to put up with the consequences of that decision. Now, there are some people that are that direct and are that amicable that would say, hey, just do what you think is best. I'm perfectly fine with it. Go ahead. How about this one? How are you doing tonight? Right, honey, fine. Fine is not saying that everything is okay. You better ask a couple more questions. And that doesn't mean what does fine mean. Did you have a rough day? Is there something I can help you with? Is there something that I could do now that I walked in the door that would make your day better? How can I be of better assistance to you? Why wouldn't we just ask the question that way? Think about that with a prospect or a client. I want you to chew on that for a little bit. All right, so that was the review. Now we're going to get into qualifiers and tie-downs, and we're actually going to get into the tie-down section. So we've looked at some qualifying questions, what that looks like, what you're trying to do. I want to tell you something, and I always hit this point, and I will hit it probably in every single presentation I do. Follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. The fortune is in the follow-up. If you've set an appointment, if you're beginning the conversation, always follow up with them. Uh, I'm going to hit some key points here, date, time, and location where you met them. If you're setting an appointment, date, time, and location of where you're going. Uh, parties to be present. How many people were there when you met them? What environment were you in if you're setting the 
appointment, who should be at this appointment? You should ask a direct question like, is there anybody else that would help you with this kind of information? Is there anybody else that should have their eyes on this information when I present it to you? You notice I didn't say, is there anybody that helps you make a decision when it comes to finance? The reason why is you haven't gotten to that step yet. You're still at introduction. You haven't done an analysis. You haven't done anything. So parties to be present. Is there anybody else that you would like to get your eyes on this? Um, if you are meeting them for the first time, making a record, make a record of where you met them. Uh, that's always a good mental jar. Uh, make a record of some people that were around you. Met them with Bill and Julie at uh, the Lions Club meeting. That way you have a mental reference to that conversation. If you're now moving to the point that you've had the conversation and everything, get them to watch the videos. It's 35 minutes of videos. It'll, it'll close the gaps on some of the information. It'll answer a lot of their questions. Many of you right now are not using the videos because you think, you know, I showed them the videos. I never hear anything back from them. Follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. If you only follow up three to four times with somebody, your chances of success are only about 20%. Yes, I did say that, and yes, that is out of the box for a lot of people. Uh, Dr. Joan, Darlene, myself, Dr. Joan actually brought this to my attention. She put it up on a screenshot that we did in a training a while back that most people don't respond until after. Are you ready for this? This even blew me away. 10 to 15 contacts. That means you may have had to leave voice messages, follow-up phone calls, how you doing, what's the day look like, how are the kids, 15 times before they trust you enough to say, you know that thing you were talking about, I think I'd like to get a look at that. I want you to think about follow-up. Just because somebody said no right now doesn't mean no forever. Uh, have them take notes. Uh, if you're talking, have them make mental reminders. You know, hey, look, don't take my business card here. I'm going to call you right now on my cell phone. What's your cell phone number? I'm going to call you. So you have my phone number. Why don't you pull up my phone number, add me into your contacts, and make a little note of who I am and where we met. Just so when I call you in a couple days and I do my follow-up, because that is something I do, you know who I am. Send a confirmation email. After you meet somebody, try to get their email. That is... Just be, that's like sending them a handwritten note in the mail. That's just good form. Send them an email. Hey, it was great meeting you at the Lions Club. I hope we have an opportunity to get together uh, and discuss uh, your business, my business. Um, I think it could be very valid for you, very valid for me. I want to build a relationship. You know, whatever that looks like, send them an email thanking them for just that invitation. If you are setting a, an appointment, confirm the day of. All of this follows into if you're setting the appointment or if you've just met them. Okay, I want to make sure we understand that. Sales track review, what are our six lessons of sales track? Anybody want to type in one of the lessons of sales track, knowing that you've been on the calls? Starting point, with whom do I start? Sounds like a great place to start, doesn't it, when you're talking about sales track training and trying to get a sale? Your 15-second commercial, that's step two. That's your offering without telling them exactly what you do, something that's engaging, something that's entertaining. Uh, something that may make them laugh, something that may engage them, but other than saying, I help people get out of debt. Uh, that doesn't sound very exciting. Make it exciting. I help people take control of the future. You know how uh, in a down market most people suffer? What if I could show you in a down market you could prosper? You know how the banks are getting all of your interest, uh, or the lion's share of your interest in a mortgage? What if I could show you how to recapture some of that interest and use that to build your future? Qualifiers and tie-downs, that's what we're on today. We're going to move next week into a personal and borrowed story. Uh, watch videos, uh, buy the Worth account. This is the best way for you to build your personal story. If you don't have a personal story, borrow a story that you've heard on the call. Call a leader and ask them for the best story they know, just so long as it's true. Don't ever fabricate. Use the truth, because I will tell you this. It will always come back to haunt you. I've had agents that have fabricated. It's come back to haunt them. It's damaged their businesses. One thing people know about me, I am always direct. Now, sometimes I'm direct to a fault. Sometimes I hurt feelings. But you never have to wonder where I stand. And you know if I say I will do it, it will be done. You should follow a similar moniker. I'm not saying model me in that context. I have my flaws. I have my things that are bad with me. And many of you out there have talents that I wish I had. But the one thing that I found out for myself in business because I have a direct approach to people is I am always honest. Anyone that has ever come to know me will tell you what Mac says, Mac does. If Mac says it, he believes it. Now, that doesn't mean I haven't been misled. That doesn't mean I haven't had bad information, but I have never intentionally lied 
to anyone. I have never intentionally fabricated information to anyone. It just is what it is. The truth will set you free. I know many of you have heard that many times. Number five is the litmus test. Number six is setting the appointment in stone. These are your first six basic lessons. And when I say first six, I want you to understand that looks like a lot of stuff. That's about 15 minutes of conversation. That's all that is. At length, if you're a chatty person, that might be 30 minutes of conversation with somebody. But these are just steps, points that you want to hit. And you want to be calculating. You want to be thinking. You want to be asking questions. You want to be taking notes. Is all this kind of coming together for you that leads you to setting that first appointment? And that first appointment could be you and your leader going out on an appointment. That could be you going out on an appointment. That could be you introducing that individual to your field closer, to your leader out there in the field so they can run the analysis and do it, and yes, you still get paid for doing that, or that could be calling in on a three-way call to support and setting them up with a field closer here at support with one of the corporate closers um, and having them run the analysis. These are your first six steps. This is what you have to get down. Remember I said you don't need to know everything. You just need to know how to introduce you need to know how to introduce and kind of guide the client and let them know, look, it is not a bad thing to say to a client, you know what, I am brand new with this. Let me get my supervisor, let me get my manager, let me get uh, the individual that brought me into this company on the phone with you. You know, would you have 10 minutes to talk to the individual that brought me into the company because they know more about this than I do? Edify that individual. The power of the three-way call can never be denied. Let me tell you, in every business there is, I just want to, I want to ask you something. Who is the authority? Who is the expert? The expert is that person you defer to when you have a prospect and say, let's get them on the phone. They may not be the absolute authority and expert on this, but that client, that prospect, you get them on the phone with that third party and say, look, this person's been in the company three years. They've had great success. They're my immediate supervisor. They're a little bit difficult to get on the phone. But I'm going to make a shot at this and see if I can't get them on the phone. If not, I'm going to leave them a text. And we're going to have a three-way call, and I'm going to let you ask that question to them. The power of the three-way call, even in today's market space, can never be denied. Refer to a corporate field, close, or run your own analysis. Either way, doesn't matter. Soft tie-downs, questions. A soft close or tie-down is designed to lead the prospect in a certain direction. This comes with the qualifying questions first, and then you begin to tie them down. The purpose of the soft closer tie down is to test the prospect's true level of interest. Are they really interested in moving forward, or are they just placating you? Are they just sitting there listening to you and being polite? If you ask the right questions, if you ask the hard questions, a lot of people don't want to ask them. What is the holdup here? What is it that's keeping you from moving forward? If I could show you a way to do this, would there be any reason you wouldn't want to know more about this? What are you struggling with today? Have you ever done direct sales? Uh, would you be willing to work with someone? You know, these are the questions that you need to know. Have you ever heard about the worth account? You know, things of this nature. The soft close and tie down objective is to get the prospect to softly commit now and to tie them to that commitment later in the sales or recruiting process for soft closing. How many of you ever have ever read a book on negotiation? Or how many of you have ever negotiated a contract or negotiated your way through a situation with your significant other? See, in a negotiation, it has to be a win-win. I'm going to say that again. In a negotiation, it has to be a win-win. And right now, whether you want to recognize it or not, with qualifying questions and tie-downs, you are negotiating. You give a little bit, they give a little bit. You give a little bit, they give a little bit. You state a case, they put up a wall. You give a little bit, they give a little bit. You state a case, they put up another wall. You give a little bit, they give a little bit. Think about this for a moment. It's not a battle, and it's not a matter of concession. It's not a matter, matter of confrontation. It's a matter of good, good active verbal skills and allowing that person to feel as though they won a little bit of yardage. And in turn, when they feel that, they will allow you to win a little bit of yardage. So when somebody's being, like if you run into a high A Tiger driver and you just happen to be a very calm, withdrawn kind of person, they're going to feel like a steamroller coming at you. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to keep your cool. Yeah, I know that sounds hard. I want you to keep your cool. I want you to trust your training. I want you to go back and I want you to think about this. And when they're coming at you, well, how's this working? How's that working? How much does it cost? 
Just tell them this one thing at a time. What was your first question? Well, how does this work? Well, it works great. It's been working for people since. No, I mean the mechanics of it. Well, to be honest with you, I really don't understand all the mechanics, but I know that we have had thousands of clients get on this product from all walks of life that have seen success with this product. And that is not an overstatement by any means. We could expand that into tens of thousands of clients that have, got, that have received this product and had great success with this product. Think through the situation. Don't let somebody beat you up. Trust your training. Recruiting example tie-down questions. If I could show you how to increase your revenue streams, would there be any reason you wouldn't want to hear about our program? I want you to think about that. If they say, well, yeah, there is, then say, well, what would be those reasons? Now you've just turned a closed-end question into an open-ended question. Ask the hard, well, yeah, there are reasons. Well, could you enlighten me? Could you help me understand your situation? What are those reasons? If I could show you how to earn that extra money you need, would you be willing to take a meeting with me? No. Well, why wouldn't you want to take a meeting with me? Do you see where you're going with this? Well, yes, I'd be absolutely willing to take a meeting with you. Well, what would interest you to find out in that meeting? Now you're leading that to an open-ended. Everything that you do, you're trying to broaden the horizon. You're trying to broaden the conversation. You're trying to expand their understanding of what you have to offer and your understanding of them individually. If I could show you a business model that is already in place and successful, is there any reason you wouldn't want to know more? Well, yes. Okay, what are those reasons? Well, I'm, I, I, I'm working a full-time job, and I don't think I have the time to do this. There's a value proposition right there. Well, do you know that many of our agents are doing this on a part-time basis, and they're seeing success without having to work their fingers, fingers to the bone? All of the processes are already in place. The learning curve is extremely simple. Uh, it's done through Vizios. It's digital. It's online. We have Monday evening trainings. Everything you need to do, you can do at your pace to be successful with this business. And this is truth. This is reality. This is our business. That is why uh, I, I say this business is so powerful. This offering is so powerful. Just to have it as an extra hollow point in your gun, an extra razor-tipped arrow in your quiver. It, it, it can be a big advantage because there are so many entry points and so many lateral uh, businesses out there to what it is that we have to offer. We all can say there's a difficulty with debt in America today, but that doesn't necessarily say that everybody's looking for a debt solution or everybody's willing to do what it takes to get out of debt. But everybody out there is looking for something when it comes to finance. I'm going to say that again, and I want you to write that down. If you take nothing away from the call, everyone out there is looking for something when it comes to finance. Insurance, retirement planning, tax, uh, tax preparation, tax law, tax codes, uh, investment properties, investing. Um, broaden your horizons of your contacts. Get to know people in these arenas. So if getting out of debt really isn't the thing for them, you can say, you know what, I hear what you're saying. You're worried about your retirement planning. You know, I have a retirement planner that I know personally. Uh, I know their ethic. I know their moral barometer. I know their true north. And I'd like to put you in touch with them. Would you be willing to entertain a conversation with them and just see if they would be a good fit for you? Get into this mindset of referring people just because they don't want exactly what you have to offer doesn't mean you can't make an inroad with somebody else that could later make an inroad for you. Uh, another recruiting example, uh, if I could introduce you to a product and a company that would complement your current business, would that interest you? No. Well, really? Why not? Uh, it's a compliment to your current business. Why wouldn't you want to know more about it? If that product could provide a substantial additional revenue stream for you, would you be willing to take a meeting with me? No. Well, why not? Yes, I'd love to take a meeting with you. Okay, during that meeting, what would be important to you? What would you want to achieve during that meeting? Do you see how all this fits hand in hand? If I could show you a business model that is already in place and successful, is there any reason you wouldn't want to know more? 
what are you answering there? There's no learning curve. Everything's already set up for you. All you got to do is plug in, get on, and start telling people about it, and then see what happens from there. Let's give you a couple more. If I was willing to work with you to create a successful action plan, would you want to move forward? That's a question you might want to ask somebody if you're trying to figure out if you want to work with them, if they'd be a good aid. Now, I don't have time to get with you to set up an action plan. Well, that would probably be a red flag with me. But if they said, yeah, I, I would love somebody to help me with an action plan with this business. You know, I've kind of tiddled around in this and diddled around in this, and I've been working a nine-to-five, and I'm a W-2 employee. I'd love to know how to build a business outside of this. Um, how about if I could show you a way to incorporate this new business? Would you want to work with me? Do you see how that's non-invasive? They're either going to say no, and if they said no, I wouldn't want to work with you. Well, why wouldn't you want to work with me? Well, I don't like you. You could hear that. And, and, and again, I'm very direct. Um, so this may not be exactly your style, but take the information, take the context of the information, take the concept, and, and work with that inside the profile of who you are, how you would position that. Would you want to work with me? Because whatever their response is, is going to automatically send up cues in your head as to whether or not you would want to work with them. Another thing I want to tell you, don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. Many personalities just do not get along with one another. And we can say that over and over and over again. And if you've been on this earth more than 30 years, you already know that is an absolute fact. Would there be any reason you would not want to work with me or invest the time necessary to be successful in this business? I love that question. I ask that to so many people. I don't ask it in exactly those words. I may ask it in five emails. I may ask it in four different phone conversations. What if I can help you be successful? Is there anything holding you back? Is there something about my demeanor or the way that I am placing information that is making it more difficult for you to learn this information? There are so many questions that you can ask a client that will begin to qualify them. So those were my recruiting examples. Let's look at some sales examples. If I could show you how to overcome that, that was their situation. Remember the value proposition? Uh, needing the money to put my kid into college. I need to buy a new car. Uh, the debt is just weighing on me. I hate living paycheck to paycheck and paying these credit card bills. I can't stand the fact that the bank is getting so much interest off of my hard-earned money. If I could show you a way how to retrieve some of that money, if I could show you a way to free up the money necessary to be able to buy that car, if I could show you a way to position yourself that you could afford your kid's college education that's up and coming, if I could show you a way to get that money set aside, put yourself in the position that you can take that vacation that you haven't taken in 10 years, would there be any reason you wouldn't want to hear about our program? Would, you wouldn't, would there be any reason you wouldn't want to hear about that solution? If I could show you how to eliminate that concern, would you be willing to take a meeting with me, going back to that value proposition, whatever it was that they said? Or if I could show you how to eliminate those concerns, maybe there was a couple different concerns they have. I'm not very computer savvy, but I do know how to use a smartphone. I'm paying my bills paycheck to paycheck. I'm sick of paying all that interest. And I have kids that are going to go to college in the next five years. If I could show you how to eliminate those concerns, address those concerns, find a solution to those concerns, would you be willing to take a meeting with me? Now, here's the caveat. If you use that one, you better believe when you get to that meeting, you better be answering those questions. Okay? So this is all about taking notes. This is not about hearing. This is not about knowledge. This is about active listening and converting that into learning and understanding your client for that second engagement. If I could show you a solution model that is already in place and successful, is there any reason you wouldn't want to know more? Again, I'm using the word solution model, that concern, how to overcome that situation. I'm using all of that based on the fact that you've listened to them, you've built a good value proposition, you understand what their concerns are, and you're now positioning this product in, in a position that, yes, this could be the solution. So they take the meeting with you, you run the analysis, it really doesn't do any good for them. Well, they took the meeting, it is possible the analysis couldn't do any good, but it's no harm, no foul. Because you're going to be honest right at that point and say, you know what, I'm looking at your situation and you're just totally upside down. Maybe you need 
uh, debt recovery. Maybe you need some consolidation. Uh, maybe you need to get with a company because your credit score is so bad that you're being killed by your credit cards. Maybe you need to start looking at uh, bad credit report recovery. Uh, you know what? You've got everything set up when it comes to debt, but how are you doing on your retirement planning? How is that looking for you with people in uh, 2001 with 9-11, with the mortgage crash in 2008? A lot of people are, remember I said everyone is looking for something financial. And whether you believe that or not, they are. They're looking for a lower interest rate on a credit card. They're looking for the best bank to bank with. They're looking for financial planning. They're looking for retirement planning. They're looking for insurance. They may be looking for debt elimination. And a solution to that, that is not just them coming up off the cuff. It's a solution that is mathematical and proven. Would you like to pay your mortgage and or other debts off sooner or later? Pretty good question. What if I told you I could show or introduce you to a way to pay off your mortgage and or other debts in one-third the time to one-half your current schedule time, would that interest you? If you knew having no debt would be life-changing and I could show you, introduce you to a way to pay off your mortgage and or other debts in one-third to one-half your current schedule time, would that interest you? Here come the tie-downs. Would you want to hear more about that? Would there be any reason you would not want to know more? Would there be any reason you would not want to move forward with me? Do you see how I'm tying all of this information together? And I know that I'm throwing a lot at you. This is a recorded webinar. Uh, you can get access to this webinar under Worth Unlimited. And if you just put in Worth Unlimited qualifiers and tie downs, you can find this on YouTube in the next two days. Um, I'm trying to build a YouTube page where we have a channel. And so all videos will just be dropped into the Worth YouTube channel channel and then you can go in there and scroll through that but we're still working that to try to figure out the best way to do it for right now search worth unlimited and search the lesson in this particular case it's qualifiers and tie downs so worth unlimited or worth account worth unlimited qualifiers and tie downs worth account qualifiers and tie downs you will find this lesson be relevant above all things ask questions be ready to associate how our program can help them with their hot spots Okay, I've said this many times, but I just want to reiterate this. Create a list of value propositions for your target market, particular field, and general proposition list. Um, don't give it to the prospect. This is your information. This is for you to relate to the client. Don't just write it out and hand it uh, to the prospect. Use it to review different value propositions prior to the appointment. Prior to Now, if you're a quick thinker, you're already building your value propositions while you're in this initial conversation with them leading up to the appointment. But I'm telling you this. If you're getting ready to go on an appointment, you've gone through the first six steps, you've got the appointment, I am telling you, you will absolutely kill yourself if you didn't take notes on what was important to them. And during that prep, uh, presentation, that first appointment, if you don't hit those value propositions and tell tell them how this fits into what their concerns are, whether you're recruiting or whether you're selling the product or whether you're doing both. People ask, do you sell to recruit or recruit to sell? I say you do both and it's based on the client. Many people say I recruit first and then try to sell. Some people say I sell first and then try to recruit. Do you know what I do? I listen to the client. And they are going to tell me what they are interested in the most. Many clients will say, yeah, I've been looking to make some extra money, or, you know, that sounds interesting. I've been thinking about getting a small business going, but I don't have any debt. Well, I'm probably not going to try to sell them the product, but I'm going to try to sell them on the concept, tell them they did it the hard way, this is the easy way, but let me show you what we have as an offering as a small business if that's what you're trying to put together. I like to do this in the form of questions. Okay, It's always questioning your client. How would your business, home life, finances improve if you had the ability or capacity to X, Y, Z? Get them to dream a little bit. Ask them how it would improve their life, their standard of living, how things would improve for them if we could address these solutions. There's where your value proposition is because you're going to hit the buttons. You're going to see the emotion come out. Remember, they buy on emotion. They back it up with logic. You better hit the value propositions to get the emotion. You better be that trusted advisor that is asking questions, that trusted advocate that can lead them to the, through the process, hit their value propositions, make it relevant to them, and move them forward in the process. Be engaged. Ask and then be quiet. Let them respond.
All right, everybody, that was only 15 seconds of silence. And I actually had people that were starting to type into the question section, we lost you. Where did you go? Attention spans for people have become very short, but there are still people out there that take time to process information. This goes to state your case and be quiet. Some people don't respond as quickly as I may respond, as quickly as you may respond. Some people may take time to process. You may be one of those people. My wife happens to be one of those people. If I ask her a question, I have to just, I literally sometimes have to bite my tongue. I have to take a sip of water. You know, you can't talk while you're drinking water. So that's the thing that I've learned about listening and waiting for the client to respond. I ask the question, and I love to have a cup of coffee or water in my hand or something, and I'll start taking sips of water until they respond to me. If they just look at me with a blank stare, I'll ask the same question again. Did I, I won't say, did you understand what I asked? I'll say something like, well, let me rephrase that, or do you need some clarity on that? I've had to sit there for as much, especially if you're at a closing, like you've done all the information, you're now at closing. I've sat for as long, and this is for real, two minutes and 45 seconds after stating my case with not another word said by anybody. Watching the wheels turn in their head, watching them look up to the right, watching them look down, then look up again to the right, watching their fingers tap, all five fingers tap together. They're not tapping their palms, they're tapping their fingers and looking all over the room. This is somebody trying to process information. Every time you ask a question, wait for a response from the prospect, no matter how long it takes. If they ask you a question before responding, lead them back to the original question and get a response. A great deferring tactic of a client is to answer a question with a question, then you ask a question, then you never get anywhere. Everybody's just asking each other questions. If you ask a question, they ask you another question. Say, you know what, I, I can appreciate your question there, but can we get an answer to my question? You can say it like, you know, I understand what you were asking there, but I, I'm still a little unclear about this. And we'll get back to your question here, but I'm still unclear about this. Can you help me understand this a little bit better? This can be very frustrating. It takes practice not to oversell or overtalk. Uh, that, that has probably been one of my greatest challenges is over-talking. I just happen to be a chatty guy. Why do you think I'm the guy that does the webinars? I love to talk. I've had people actually say, Mac, I think you love to talk because you love hearing your own voice. Um, if that doesn't say a lot about who I am, I don't know what does. But people that have come to know me know there's a deeper heart there. It's not about hearing my own voice. I just really love to talk. It's how I communicate. Listen, process, what are they really saying? Understand what they are saying. Take it from listening and hearing and knowledge to active listening, understanding, learned information. Be intentional, be picky. They will tell you exactly what they need to hear to move forward in the sales or recruiting process. Not everyone you speak with is a good candidate for worth. Please remember that. Use questions to qualify your prospects. Use tie-downs to increase and solidify their commitment. If you have to strong-arm someone to move forward, they are not a good fit. If you have to use tricks and gauges to move them forward. If you've got to use these tricky little sales tactics to get them moving forward, chances are you're going to lose them in the end. Use credibility, use ethics, use moral, use value. Use a value proposition. Listen to your client. Get to know who they are. My side notes for sale and recruiting are don't judge someone and make the decision for them about joining as an agent or a prospect. You never know who needs and or wants the extra income or have a feeling of accomplishment, not with the income, but maybe accomplishment with their finances, maybe accomplishment, I did this, I was able to do a business, maybe an accomplishment, I've tried budgets, I've tried this, I've never been successful. Man, this is working for me. No means no for now, not for good. Follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. Even if they tell you no, keep them in your bucket list. Follow up with them until they tell you, stop calling me. Follow up, follow up, follow up, fortunes in the follow up. Do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. Be a person of your word. Make notes in the calendar. If you're forgetful, make notes that you will not forget. Put it on poster board if you have to. But if you tell somebody you're going to do it, stand up to it. Do it. If you're not going to do it, be forthright enough to tell them, I am not going to do that. Chances are I'm probably not going to follow up with you. Chances are I'm probably not going to get that information for you. 
but that really shouldn't be the response. You should be there for the client, the heart of a servant, to serve the client, the prospect. Be consistent and be persistent. Persistency is the name of the game. Endurance, perseverance is the name of the game. Begin training with new agents right away. If you have a brand new sale, follow up with them the next day. Follow up with them the day after. Did you call agent support? Have you set up your training to get your program going and activated? Because let me tell you something. If you just sell the product to somebody and you walk away, are, are most people procrastinators? You might end up with a client that loved it at the beginning. A week later, they've gone cold. Two weeks later, they haven't set it up. And a month later, they're wanting a refund because obviously the product doesn't work. What about agents? Same thing. They get in, they're all fired up. You don't follow up with them? Well, he doesn't care about me. So now they're a little less fired up. A week goes by, uh, they forgot about me. Uh, two weeks goes by, I wish I hadn't spent the money. This is not a one and done. Whether you're recruiting or whether you're selling, follow up with your clients, follow up with your agent prospects, make sure they are in a process, get them moving in a process so they feel as though they're accomplishing something. If they're on the product, make sure they're getting set up with training. If there's something they don't understand, say, you know what, I understand you don't understand that, that's why we have a training department. Get them on the phone because you have a lot of clients that want to talk to you and talk to you only and you have to divert them. And you can't take the time to set up the product for the client. You can't take the time to answer every question your client has. You can be a good sounding board, direct them in the right area. Maybe you do a three-way call to support so they're not as scared of support, that scary corporate entity, and they find out we have people that are just like them on the other end of the phone that are willing to help them and really have their best interest at their concern. Do this with your prospects as well, your new agents. Give them a path to run on. Give them some homework. Give them something to do. Show them the five steps of success in your agent portal. Show them what it's like to make a name list. Show them by your actions, by your interaction with them, how they should be interacting with other agents, how they should move their business forward. In summary, use qualifying questions and tie downs. Remember, our job is to weed out people who are not a good fit and move forward with people who are a good fit. Use questions to find out what is important to them. Make sure they're a good fit as a client or an agent. Guide through the sales process. Use tie downs to test true level of a prospect's interest. Gain small commitments. Tie them to a commitment later in the process. What the person perceives is more important than what you are trying to say, so watch Listen, learn to their responses. That right there, that piece right there is what I really want as the biggest takeaway from tonight. It is really important for you to listen to your clients. They will give you everything that you need. Don't let anyone fall through the cracks. Use a contact management system. Uh, use a contact recovery management system. Do a calendar, a spreadsheet, whatever works for you. Some people still use day planners yes, and are very effective. I still use a spiral notebook, so I can go back over spiral notebooks that are dated, and I can remember conversations. I can take these back three years. I have literally over 50 spiral notebooks, and the pages are dated. I, I still am a write-down person. When I put something in a computer, I tend to forget it. It just goes by the wayside, but if I write it down, I, I can say, oh, yeah, I remember that. Let me go back and find that. Follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. The fortunes in the follow-up, always a big key for me. Remember your worth goals and take action today. What does that really mean? You have to set up some goals. What are you going to try to achieve? And hold yourself accountable to those goals. Make your leader an accountability partner. Say, you know what? I'm going to offer it to you that I'm going to be accountable. I'm going to have a weekly call with you. I'm going to tell you what I've done in the way of phone calls. I'm going to tell you what I've done in the way of presentations. And I want you to push me because I want success in this. My father used to tell me that procrastination is the grave that success was buried in. I don't know why I love that quote so much. Maybe it's because I'm a procrastinator, and maybe it's because I love my father. But that was some vital advice that I have. Don't be a secret business owner, a secret agent. What that means is get out there and talk to people, but on top of that, let your agent know what your intention is. Let them know what you would like to achieve with this business. Let them know what your dream is, your goal, and then ask them the question, how would you, go about achieving that? What would you put in place? What do you think I should do from your experience if this is the goal I want to achieve? Don't just write out your goal. Keep it to yourself. Suffer secretly because you're not having success. 
Let somebody else know about your goal. Let them hold you accountable and let them give you a path to run on. I don't care if you have 25, 30, 40 years in sales. I have a 20-year-old daughter that's in her fourth year of college. She owns her own LLC. She works two part-time jobs. And today I just found out she landed an internship with a senator here in the state of Utah. My daughter schools me every day. Now I'm dad. I'm the one that's supposed to be teaching her. That young lady teaches me every day. Just because of somebody's age, just because of their standing, just because of their style, does not mean you do not have something to learn from them. And just because of whatever you think about yourself, whatever internal dialogue you are telling yourself, does not mean that you don't have something to teach someone else. In this process that I call life, I truly believe that there is something we should always be doing. We should always be teaching, and we should always be learning, understanding, converting knowledge into learning and understanding and teaching. We need to stay open. Worth in your agent portal, you have the five steps to success. I would look at them. I would make a plan with your leader, and I would review these every week. Even if you don't do it with your leader, if that's your not your style, go into your back office, look at the five steps, and formulate your game plan, and at the very least, share it with somebody else that's in the company and ask if this is achievable. I want to encourage you. I know this has been a lot of information. This has been a long call. But this is something that's very dear to me, this company, this product. I've been with this company now going on 16 years. I have been the national sales and training director for this company for the last 12 years. I'm not trying to give you my credentials to puff me up. I want you to know that what we train here works. I want you to know when we put people on the call, it's of value. I want you to know that your Monday nights are well spent, and I want you to travel that information to the new people you bring in, your old agents, we are beginning to explode. We are seeing the new energy inside of this company. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Plug in, get engaged, and then get out there and talk to somebody. What I want to leave you with this evening is this five steps of success. These are your first five steps. Find that in your agent portal. It's under agent training. This will take you deeper into this, but these are your five basic steps. It works for everybody I've ever seen do this. And here's what I want to leave you with. Let's get out there and do it big. Let's get out there and do it right. But at the very least, let's get out there and do something big right now. This is Max Saunders, National Sales and Training Director with Worth Unlimited, saying bye-bye for now.